Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. I'm here today to do a clip on a topic that's generated a lot of conversations on our channel and I've seen a ton of discussions on the internet about it as well. And the question at hand is how do I modify my standard DJI GO application from eight channels of communication to a full 32? Now I thought I'd do the clip for a couple of different reasons. I am going to walk you through the procedure for both an Apple device and an Android device. You're going to use the same configuration file for both. A little bit of a different procedure between the two but I'll give you the steps you need to actually do the upgrades. But before I did that I want to explain kind of why you'd care about this modification. So some of the misconceptions that are out there on the internet are that if you do this modification it's going to improve your signal strength between your controller and the drone. That's not actually true. What you're doing by doing this modification is you're expanding the available channels that your controller can communicate with your drone. So you're taking it from a standard eight channels which is kind of a a bunch together grouping of channels and expanding it to a full 32. Now the reason that's important is that unfortunately the controller communicates on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Now it's really a band of frequencies that live in the 2400 to 2483 megahertz frequency band and in that band there's a lot of traffic so you've got things like Wi-Fi connections believe it or not railroad trains communicate in that band, you've got microwave ovens in there, um, and you've got um, additional noise in that space from like smart meters on the home. So a lot of cases, if you live in an area where you've got smart meters that actually communicate with the electric company over, uh, over Wi-Fi, they're going to interfere with it as well. So there's, a, there's just a lot of stuff in that band. Now that band is known as the ISM band, which is the industrial, scientific, and medical band, um, and there's just a lot of noise in that space. So having only eight channels to communicate means that your controller is constantly looking for the best channel to communicate with the drone and locking into that. A lot of times if you're in an area where there's noise in the middle of that band, uh, you can't overcome those signals, so it'll severely reduce the amount of distance you'll get out of your drone. So I guess effectively it does make it seem like you can fly further, but it doesn't mean you're increasing the power of your controller. So a couple other things to get out of the way. Um, if you do this modification, which I've done on mine and I use it occasionally, you won't actually be able to search across the 32 bands dynamically. So right now, the eight bands that are available in the stock application, the controller and the drone are actually trying to communicate across all eight on a regular basis, and they'll bounce between those different frequencies to find the strongest one, and it does that seamlessly. You don't have to do anything with it. If you increase this to 32, you'll find an additional 12 bands below the original eight and 12 above the original eight, those 24 bands you're adding are not automatically scanned by the controller. So you have to put it into custom mode and actually pick the band that you want it to communicate with. Now the challenge there is if you're in an area where you've got a lot of noise in the middle and you find a band outside of it that's a lot stronger, you can pick that band and actually get a better communication and get better further distance out of it. So that's something you want to play around with. That works out pretty well. The other thing I wanted to point out is that this modification doesn't change anything in your iPad's configuration or your controller. You're not doing any modifications that are permanent. All you're doing essentially is taking a brand new configuration file and replacing the original configuration file that's inside of the DJI Go app. Now if you decide you want to back out of this later on and get back to the standard application, it's just a simple matter of uninstalling the app and then reinstalling the app and the new configuration file that comes in with the reinstallation will overwrite this file that you're changing. So all the instructions you need to do this will be in the video if you pay attention after this. Um, I've also put a link where you can download the configuration file that you'll need to do these modifications. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know, but we'll get into the video and, um, and we'll see how it goes. So thanks for watching. Okay, so the first step in the process is for you to download the actual config file you'll need to do the upgrade. Uh, there's a link inside of the video if you look underneath the comment section that allows you to download that file. It's a really small file, so just download it and save it someplace on your computer where you can find it. And then what we'll do is step through the application upgrade for both the Apple product and for an Android product. And that way, whichever one you have, you'll be able to do this upgrade and expand your capability from 8 channels all the way up to 32 channels, which gives you a much broader spectrum of connection. So grab that file first, and then we'll step into the two procedures, first with the Apple and then second with the Android. Okay, at this point you should have downloaded the config file and have it stored in your computer in a place that you can easily find it. I'm going to do two upgrades. I'll do the Apple one first, then I'll do the Android upgrade. What you're looking at right now is the actual iPad screen that I look at when the DJI Go app is open. And you're looking at a stock version of that. So if you look closely, you'll see that there are eight channels exactly that are enabled, channels 13 through 20. When we finish this upgrade, you'll have an additional 24 channels. There'll be 12 below this and 12 above this for a total of 32, which means your controller will have a wider variety of channels available to it to connect to your drone. Now the upgrade is very straightforward. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up uh, iTunes once you connect your iPad or your iPhone to your computer. When you do that, you're going to want to click on the Apps button, which will bring up all the applications that you have loaded on your 
Apple device. So if you scroll down, I've got two applications, DJI Go and the Kindle app. When I click on DJI Go, you can see all the files that are in the folder for the DJI Go app. What I'm going to do is down the bottom, there's an Add File button. I'm going to click that once. That's going to bring up a browser window where I can look for the file that I downloaded, the config file. Now I have that on a portable drive, not that it matters. But under the DJI config file folder, if I click on that, I've got a .dji.configs file. You want to select that and you want to click open. When you do that, you may get a warning saying, hey, you're about to overwrite the stock file. If it does give you that warning, just say, OK, replace it. If it doesn't give you the warning, it's no big deal to actually overwrite the file automatically. And that's really all there is to the upgrade. So at this point, what you've done essentially is overwritten the original config file, which restricted you to eight channels, with a brand new configuration file that opens up all 32. Now, the next screen I'll show you in a second is the after screen that shows you exactly how those channels have been enabled. All right, what you're looking at now is a screen capture after the upgrade, and you can see the original eight channels are still there, channel 13 through 20. And if you look closely, you'll see that I've got 12 channels below it and 12 channels above it for a total of 32. Now, I will tell you that looking at this, if you look closely, the blue one is the active channel. You can see that it's bouncing around a little bit between those inside that eight channel, the original eight channel bands. It's not going to jump outside those eight channels. So a lot of people are confused about this, but just enabling the 32 channels doesn't mean that you're going to search across all of them to find the best connection. It's still going to stay within those eight channels. If you want to use one of those external channels beyond that, you've got to put it in custom mode. And then another window pops up that allows you to select the channel. So what I typically do if I'm going to play with this is I'll watch the channels outside that band to find one that's pretty stable where I'm flying. Right now the lower bands look really good. So six is good, five is good. I may then select that channel and fly in that channel. Now the danger there is that you've now reduced your connections to one particular band. So you want to be very careful when you're flying that that band stays rock solid. But the nice part about this is it does give you a wider variety of bands that you can select from to actually make that connection. So anyway, that's the upgrade in a nutshell. If you want to revert back to the original eight bands and get rid of the extra 24 that you just added, all you have to do is delete the DJI Go app and reinstall it, and you'll go back to the original configuration. The original configuration file will download and overwrite this one, and you're right back where you started. All right, now we'll do the upgrade to the Android product. What I'm using is an NVIDIA Shield K1, and what you're looking at is a screen capture of that tablet with the stock application on there. And you can see the eight channels that come with the stock application are active, channels 13 through 20. Once I finish the upgrade, you're going to see the other 24 channels appear, so you have a full 32. You're going to use the same configuration file that you downloaded already. You're just going to transfer it to the tablet in a slightly different fashion. So the first thing you want to do is connect up your tablet to your computer, and then open up a file browser window. And you should immediately see your tablet, and you can expand on your tablet. Then you can expand on internal storage, and you'll see a bunch of folders in there. The one you want is Android. Expand on that. And inside there, there'll be data and media. You want to expand the data. And then down the bottom of that, you'll have a bunch of applications in there. But look for the DJI.pilot. If you expand that, there'll be two folders, cache and files. You're going to want to drop that configuration file into the files folder. So find that file first, the configuration file. I have it on this external drive. There it is. All you're going to have to do is drag that into the Files folder under the DJI Pilot app. So if I slide that over to Files and drop it in there, everything's good to go. Now if I look at that particular folder, you'll see that it's in there. It's a very small file, but it basically enables those extra 24 channels for you. So at this point, if you just reboot the DJI Go app, you'll see that those extra 24 channels are there and you'll have a full view of 32 channels. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a screen capture of that same tablet after the upgrade's been done. You can see very clearly that there are full 32 channels available to you there. The 8 channels in the middle are still there. There are 12 below and 12 above it. Now, just like with the uh, upgrade on the iPad, those middle 8 channels are the ones when it's in auto mode that they'll switch between. If you want to select any of the lower 12 or the upper 12 channels, you've got to put it in manual mode and actually pick the channel you want to make the connection on. Now, the caution I'll have for you again, just like I did with the iPad, is if you do that, whatever channel you pick is the only channel that's going to talk to your drone. So the only time I really play with this is when I'm in a situation where, for some reason, those middle eight channels seem to be very, very noisy, and that can be caused by Wi-Fi or power lines or even railroad trains, believe it or not. So those things can cause issues in that space. If I find a channel that's outside of those middle eight, the lower 12 or the upper 12, I may pick it and make that connection. The danger, again, there is that that's the only channel it's going to stay on, so you've got to be very careful to watch that channel and make sure you've got a strong connection between it and your drone. All right, that's all there is to it. 
Pretty simple procedure. It's three steps basically. You download the configuration file, then you apply that configuration file to your Apple or your Android device, reboot the application, and voila, you've got 32 channels. Uh, if you decide later you don't want those modifications on your controller any longer, all you have to do is reinstall the application. It'll completely wipe out that configuration file for you, and you'll be back to a stock application. I will caution you as well that if you do an upgrade on the application, you may lose those additional 24 channels. Should be a simple matter of just reapplying that same configuration file to open up the additional 24 channels. So if you have any questions about the process or procedure, please drop them below. We'll get back to you very quickly on it. We love that we're gaining subscribers. So if you have friends that are drone operators that are looking for a channel that covers late breaking news and new technologies and things like that, pass this along to them. Thumbs up are always good. That's encouraging for us. So please do that if you like the video. And again, we really appreciate you guys watching. As long as this is interesting, we'll continue to produce and we're having a lot of fun with this. So thanks an awful lot for watching.